you have your Bibles, open up to Acts chapter 4, verse 23 through 31. I'm going to read that to you. And this is about all the believers having everything in common, and they're praying. Praying. Upon their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. Mm -hmm. And when they had heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth, the sea and everything that's in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father, David. Why do the nations rage and the people's plot in vain? Mm -hmm. The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. Mm -hmm. They did what your power and your will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Yes. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders mm -hmm. through the name, the name the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Jesus. And yes. after they prayed, the place where they were meeting together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, use me as a messenger of your glory and honor this morning, right now. Lord, I pray that as uh, you have used, used us all daily, I pray that you just speak into our hearts right now. May your word grow and germinate and, and and Lord, may we be able to appropriate your word in our lives. And Lord, that it will change us now and forevermore. In Jesus, your holy name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Seems like our, our world is at civil war. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about the Marvel movie, superhero movie, Civil War. I'm talking about all the political environment and yes. all the unrest, uh, upheaval and unrest in this world. It seems like we are on the brinks of a civil war, but in the midst of a civil war in the midst of battle, in the midst of blood and gore, in the midst of all these things, God can still bring peace. Amen. God right. can still bring revival. Yes. God can still bring his spirit poured upon the people who pray. Mm -hmm. During the civil war, chaplains and faith played a vital role in both sides of the north and south that's right the confederates had over 2300 chaplains serving their army mm -hmm. the north had less a thousand less 1300 serving but there was said that a mighty revival hit yeah and it said that over 150 uh, confederates uh, soldiers converted to christ during mm -hmm. the war and also the same amount on the other side, on the northern side. And that God, it showed that God was still moving in the midst of a bloody civil war. God can still have his way in our lives. Amen. No matter what turmoil, well, no matter what situation is going on, God is still on the throne. Yes. One chaplain in the Union Army, uh, Chaplain Milton T. Hanley of the 55th Illinois Infantry, mm -hmm. he wrote, wrote about in his journal and his memoir and it's for our posterity, that he uh, encountered a soldier, and they were about ready to go into battle. Mm -hmm. And this soldier came to him and said, Chaplain, I don't know if I can go. Well, I don't know. I'm afraid I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. And so the chaplain said, just go ahead, go down the hill a piece, pray about it for a while and, until we're getting ready to go out. And if you can't go, if you cannot go, I'll talk to the captain and see what I can do. Mm -hmm. So the soldier went and he prayed. And then previously, the soldier what came to faith in Christ, one of those vital revival movements there in the camp. Yes. And, and so uh, he was waning a bit in his faith. Mm -hmm. So he went and prayed and said for over an hour. He came back and he told the chaplain, chaplain, don't worry about it. God told me that I'm going to be okay. God instilled upon me his spirit. I'm going to go into battle. I'm going to do my duty. Amen. And would you know it? That chaplain Hanny writes, that, that soldier went into battle and was not even touched in that Amen. battle. See, God can touch our lives Amen. and bring revival in us. And it doesn't mean that just because someone is of faith that they're not going to be unscathed by death or war. That's right. But that is just one instance of God's power working there in the Civil War. Today, it seems like we're at Civil War. It seems like Amen. that our nation is... Is tearing itself apart. Yes. But we can't have unity. Amen. We can't right. have peace. That's right. 
going back to our scripture reference, we find out that in Acts chapter 3, Peter and John are walking through the temple area. Mm -hmm. And they get to a, past a gate that's called beautiful. It was a bronze sheathed gate that separated the court of Gentiles from the court of women. Yes. In the temple courts, there were four divisions of the temple. You had the court of Gentiles, where only the Gentiles could go. Yes. Then there was a gate, the beautiful gate. And then they could go, there was a court of women, where only far, so far as women could go. Uh-huh. And then there was a court of Israel for the men to go. And the last court was the court of priests, only those of the priesthood could go into. Mm -hmm. So Peter and John, they were passing through that gate, and they were going to go to the court of Israel so they could go and pray. Yes. And they passed by a beggar. Mm. Now, this beggar was asking for silver and gold. He wanted coin. He wanted money. He wanted somebody to give him something because that's all. He was uh, born crippled from birth, and, and so he just wanted somebody to give him some money so he couldn't work. Right. He didn't have a living. He didn't have anybody taking care of him. Well. So the only thing he could do is bang. Mm -hmm. It's not like today you might see, you know, some John Stossel report of somebody begging on the side of the road and they may have, say, you know, help wanted, I, I need help, I need money, uh -huh. on a sign on them, but they live in some mansion down the road. Yes. This is not the case. This guy was no livelihood at all. He was crippled. He just, he couldn't, couldn't uh, make a living at all. Peter and John came upon him and the old famous saying, silver and gold have I none. But what I do, I give to you. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Amen. And That's the man right. got up and he walked. Amen. That's the man right. was able to walk on his own two feet. Jesus uh -huh. healed that man right then and there. Well, The apostles, uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit, performed this miracle. Yes. And then it gave an opportunity for them to start preaching to the entire crowd while they were there in that temple area. Which enraged and ticked off. Yes. The Sadducees. Uh -huh. Because Peter and John were pre Peter was preaching about the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Yes. That Jesus is alive. And the Sadducees, they were a faction of the Jewish uh, leading body that were kind of like priests who did not believe in certain things that yes. normal mainline did. They were kind of liberal. Mm -hmm. In fact, they were so liberal they did not believe in the resurrection of the dead. Uh-huh. They believed kind of like in a soul sleep, or they believe something like that. But that the dead cannot resurrect from, resurrect from the grave at all, like Jesus did. Mm -hmm. So that enraged them and ticked them off. And they, they grabbed Peter and John and stopped them from preaching. And they grabbed them and took them before the Sanhedrin. Yes. And the Sanhedrin was the governing body of Sadducees and Pharisees. And the governing body of the religious council, they, they, they brought Peter and John before them. And they said, explain to us, uh -huh. what is it that you're teaching? Well... And that gave an opportunity from somebody, a healing, to automatically preaching to all the Pharisees and Sadducees in that governing body of Sanhedrin. They were able to proclaim the name of Jesus. Amen. That's right. That salvation is found in nobody else. That this man, who's been crippled from birth, yes. now he's able to walk. And mm -hmm. they were it was something that they could not deny. So fearing the mob, they let them go. Yes. Told them not to preach in the name of Jesus anymore. Uh huh. And their response was, we have to obey God rather than you. Amen. We're going to be preaching about Jesus. Amen. So they still reluctantly let him go. And they get back to the church at Peter and John. And they get back to the church and tell the church exactly what had happened. And they started this prayer meeting. And they started, and during this prayer meeting, the Holy Spirit poured out. And they received uh, God's spirit and the earth shook. Yes. And God confirmed it with miracles and signs and wonders. Yes. Let me tell you, there's some elements here that we need to learn about our prayer life. Mm -hmm. How many of you are in a stale, dry period in your life today, in your prayer life? How many feel that your prayers don't go beyond the ceiling? Mm-hmm. Because maybe it's because of COVID nineteen, you're you're suffering uh, financial burdens and or health burdens mm -hmm. or uh, relationship burdens, and you're burdened by all the stuff that's going on in the world. Then you turn on the news, and there's political upheaval, and, and it just seems like nothing is going right. Amen. People tearing down statues and mm -hmm. desecrating monuments, and it just seems like everything is all like the world's going to hell in a handbasket. Amen. That's right. Even today, we Christians. 
are being persecuted. Mm -hmm. Because it's becoming politically incorrect to proclaim the name of Jesus. Amen. Even I saw the news just recently, a street pe preacher was beat up in the streets because he started preaching to the crowds about uh -huh. Jesus. Uh -huh. And they beat him up. And some guy with a handgun had to come out and rescue the street preacher. Before that, they killed the street preacher. Uh-huh. My Lord. In this day and time. Mm. In America. This is going on. When you cannot pronounce, uh, proclaim the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord have mercy. Jesus. Mm-hmm. We need the power of the Lord, don't we? Amen. Yes, just like Peter and John, just like the early church, we need the power of the Lord. I heard it once said recently, so, and all the COVID hype, all the stuff going on, the height of it, that some people put in the newspapers that said that we need to believe in science. Hmm. Prayer cannot save you from the COVID virus. Hmm. Only science can. But let me tell you on a little secret. Who created science? Who created this world? God. Amen. Yahweh God is the creator of science. Amen. He's the creator of math. That's right. Jesus uh, is the one foundational glue, super glue of this universe, holds everything together. Amen. If it weren't for Jesus, I believe we would all fly apart. Amen. But God is the creator of all things science. So when we pray to God, yes. we are tapping into a scientifical, mathematical God Amen. who created all of us. And so he gives us the ability to find medicines for various diseases and That's illnesses right. and viruses. That's right. It is God ordained, Amen. not man ordained. Amen. God is the creator. So every medicine that you take today for whatever is going on in your body or whatever vitamin you need, let me tell you something, it comes from God. Amen. It doesn't come from bears. It doesn't come from any company, my scripts. It doesn't come from any other company. It doesn't come from Johnson pharmaceutical company That's right it comes from god amen it comes from god he gives us that inspiration mm -hmm. to make that that's right he's a mathematical god creating the universe that gives us all the things that we need to make what we need upon this earth all the medicines that we need but ultimately they come from god amen sounds may sound weird to you it may sound like a revelation to you but if you think about it it's true amen. all things come from god that's right that's the Bible tells us in James chapter 5, verse 16, the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Yes. Do you want your prayers to be effective today? Then it needs to start, number one, by praise. That's what happened here in Acts chapter 4. In Acts chapter 4, once Peter and John got back to the church who were praying, they all started to praise. This prayer started off with praise and how great and glorious God is, mm -hmm. how wonderful God is, how mighty and magnificent he is. Our God, he says, oh, sovereign Lord, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. Yes, yes. It's the same way as Jesus did, started his prayer, model prayer. When we all repeat it in church, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy yes. name. What is hallowed? Holy is your name. Yes. Hallowed is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. They are in praise of Jesus. Yes. The book of Revelation, I had a Bible college professor tell me that the book of Revelation was a hymn book of praise. Hmm. Yes, it had some mysteries in there, but namely is a hymn book of praise for the early church. Hmm. Because if you look, especially in chapter 19, chapter 19 is straight praise to God. Mm -hmm. Are you praising God today? Are you living your life like it is a hymn book of praise mm -hmm. to God. Sometimes we may need to get more like King David. When King David, in uh, 2 Samuel 6, 14, it says he danced with all of his might. Yes. Basically, in his fruit of the looms. Mm -hmm. He stripped down to his underwear, his BDDs, and he ran around in the courtyard in front of everybody dancing before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we need to get undignified like that before God. Amen. We're too dignified in the church. That's right. We're too ritualistic. We're too traditionalistic. Yes, we need tradition. Yes, we need ritual. Yes, it, those things are good and great, and, and they're part of us. But sometimes, sometimes, we just need to let go and praise God. Amen. If you can do it at a football game, strip off your shirt and paint John 3, 16, and sub-zero weather at a football game, I am sure that we can have just a little bit more excitement in church today, can't we? Amen. Just a little bit more. Amen. When my daughter, Autumn, she's my youngest daughter. She's now a grown woman with married with three children. 
But when she was a young child, sometimes she would be kind of mischievous. She'd be bad. Mm-hmm. What would we do? I'd punish her and give her, say, you got to go time out for what you did. This is what you did wrong, lying, or whatever it was. And I sent her in, into time out into her room. Mm-hmm. Later on, maybe I was laying in bed or laying somewhere, uh, watch TV or doing something, and I would get a love note. And I'd open up this note from my daughter, Autumn. She said, Daddy, I love you so much. Mm-hmm. Please forgive me. You're such a wonderful, great dad. I, and, and she, you know, just went the long letter, how praising me, how great I was, because she need, wanted to get out of her punishment time. Amen. She couldn't stand time out. Now, my son, Matthew, I punished him in his room. <laughs> That's fine with me. He went to his room. He played his games. He did whatever. He, that was his time. He loved it, you know. But my daughter, Autumn, could not stand being in her room. My her daughter, her oldest daughter, Malin, is the same way. Malin, you punish her to her room, and she's back in five minutes, begging to get out. Mm-hmm. You know, just back and forth constantly. <laughs> she would not stay in that room. She hates it, just like her mom mm-hmm. was. And But God sometimes wants our love letters. Amen. What is your love letter to God? Not just because you're in trouble. Amen. That's because right. you love him. That's right. Just because. Just like writing a love letter to your spouse. Just because. That's right. It's a rose to God. What is that love letter? It's your prayers. Amen. It's your prayer to God. Just praise Him. Give Him the glory and honor that He alone deserves. Amen. Let's take up just a moment, and I'm just going to lead us in a prayer of praise. Just a praise. And right in the middle of my sermon, just let, let's just pray real quick before I get to you on to the next point. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you corporately as individuals for all that you've done in our lives. We raise our hands to thank you and for our church, our family, our homes, our provision, and namely your presence in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for times of testing and trial. We thank you for times of sickness or great health. Lord, we thank you for times when Satan and his demons have fought against us, for we have grown stronger in the fight. Yes, Lord. Thank you for those hard times, then and now and also in the future to come. Yes, Lord. We love you, Lord, and we, we as a people want to be all that you called us to be for you. Thank you, and we praise your holy name for all that you do for us and your love to us through your son, Jesus. Jesus, in turn, we love you as well. And we offer up our thanksgiving and exaltation of praise to your mighty holy name. You are the perfect. We we want to be the perfect bride for you. You are the perfect groom for us. We love you and adore you both now and forevermore. And Lord, we thank you for your sweet Holy Spirit doing mighty acts and deeds in our lives and to lead us and guide us to closer to you. So the whole world will know where that true source of power comes from. And it comes from you. Yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, continue to pour out your presence here in this place and in our lives. For holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And forever we are to praise you with our lips and our actions. In Jesus' name, name. we praise you. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise Jesus. Amen. Even if it's going down the road. And you just put on some praise and worship music and just start praising the Lord. Even though Amen. you keep your hands on the wheel, keep your eye on the road, and just start praising him. Just start praising him and give him that glory and honor that he alone deserves. Amen. The second element is petition. They ask for things. They ask for help. They ask God for assistance. Amen. And don't be afraid to ask God. That's right. Some people I've, I've encountered in the hospital here you say, I can't ask God because, you know, God has, is too big. He, he's got bigger fish to fry. He, you know, he, he's... I just, I just need you, chaplain, maybe say a quick prayer for me. But, but I really can't pray to God because I don't really feel like he, he wants to take care of me. Basically, that's what they're saying. Mm-hmm. They, but that's not true. God loves you. Amen. He loves everything about you. He loves it when you have a headache. He loves it when you stub your toe. He, he loves you at all times, and he wants to take care of you Amen. in those times when you're suffering and going through trials and turmoils and, and, and suffering in your body. He wants to take care of you. Bring your petitions, your requests to God. In fact, they said, the early church said, Consider their threats, Lord. Enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through your holy servant. They're not saying through a guy dressed in a white suit. Amen. That's right. They're saying through your holy servant, Jesus. That's right. The church wanted to glorify Jesus. And they wanted to receive strength from God in order to proclaim the name of Jesus and Mm -hmm. testify through signs and miracles and wonders about the name of Jesus so that people would come to faith in Christ. Yes. The Bible says at the end of three there, because there's 
All the over 5,000 people came to Christ Amen. because of this young man being healed. Yes. And Peter and John's response to that. They were available to preach. Amen. And they wanted God to enable them to preach more fiercely, more with more boldness, with more power. They needed the power. Yes. Jesus says when you James chapter 4, verse 3 says, When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. Mm -hmm. Some of you are asking God, God, give me a Cadillac or give me a Ferrari, give me a Lamborghini, give me you know, a Bentley, give me this, give me that, give me all this stuff, give me a big yes. mansion on the hill. By the way, you are not going to be able to afford those things Amen. because That's the right. tax bill is going to come due. The tax man is going to be knocking on your door right. for the money, for the price of that Ferrari. You try to That's tag right. that here in Maryland, a Ferrari? I can imagine what that tax is going to be like. That's right. Or your hill on the hill, mansion on the hillside. Right. Your mansion on the hillside is not here. It's in heaven, by Amen. the way. There's an old hymn. I'm just uh, passing through. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. Amen. And my home is somewhere beyond the blue. Amen. So we got to realize that we have a home elsewhere. That's right. You don't have to worry about the mortgage here. We have free mortgage, Amen. Free, free home up there. But Jesus even says, he says, this is a prayer. He says, very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I've been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. And when I will do whatever you ask in my name, yes. so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything, anything. in my name, and I'll do it. Yes. Now, we're not going to ask God for all these expensive, luxurious, earthly things for our glory, for our wants, our needs mm -hmm. in his name. Mm -hmm. But we're going to ask, Lord, give me that boldness. Let me be able to preach the gospel. Let me be able to share the love of Christ. And he's yes. going to give that strength to you. Yes. There's times when I come to work here, and be honest with you, as a chaplain, I don't feel like ministering. Mm -hmm. I know that may be sacrilegious to hear, uh -huh. but I'm a human. Amen. I'm flesh right. and blood. I come into work and then sometimes I'm dragging my feet. I'm tired of saying, Lord, I, don't, I really don't want to, I really don't want to visit people. I really don't want to do this to that. Mm -hmm. Lord, give me strength. Mm -hmm. As soon as I say, give me strength, I get a walk-in counseling or I'm called up to the floor or I walk in somebody's room to pop in and check on everybody. And, and it ends up being a big lengthy counseling time and someone really needs me and God yes. puts me to use. Amen. Amen. So maybe right. we should stop praying that. Oh, Lord, <laughs> you know, but, but pray. For God to use you, yes. and He will use you. Amen. Amen. You know, and God, Jesus is not a liar. He said, "Ask me for anything, and I will That's do right. it." That's right. He's not a liar. He's not saying, "Ask me for some things." Ask me for anything, and I'll do it. Amen. And Philippians four thirteen says, "Do not be anxious in anything, but in everything prayer and petition, that request with thanksgiving, present your request to God." Yes. We need to make sure that we are praying and bringing our request to God. So, are you suffering today? Are you suffering in illness and disease? All illness, theologically speaking, is a result from the fall. Mm -hmm. We live in a very sinful world. That's right. We are not perfected. We're not living in the Garden of Eden. We live in a fallen world that has death in it. That's right. And we all sickness is a result of the That's sin. Right. Amen. Of Adam and Eve coming to this world. Yes. And so it may not be a result of our sins, but it's a result of sin in general, a yes. fallen world, a fallen state that we live in. And we're all, this world is degrading. This world is falling apart. Yes. You know, and our bodies are aging. They are falling apart. Yes. And parts, you know, and, and just can't recover. And we get sickness and disease and illnesses and cancer and all yes. that type of stuff. But our God will come in. And heal us. Amen. Some people, and I can't explain why. I can't explain why some people can be healed. Some people can't. Mm -hmm. Here, but here's a story that, in my mind, helps reconcile everything together. In my mind, we had a gentleman in our church who we loved very, very much. He was dying. He was leukemia, suffering horribly. He's a very faithful man. And at, there are times I remember. I remember him distinctly saying he wanted to go home with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Well, he got his wish. After elders of the church came and anointed him and prayed, and we prayed for him to be healed. Mm -hmm. And not shortly after that, he passed away. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, he did get his grant, his wish, his That's desire, right. his prayer. And that was the ultimate healing. Amen. Because this body, this body is degrading, and we may be able to last another year or two, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years at the most, beyond. Yeah. But ultimately, the best healing there is with Jesus. Amen. This old, mortal, failing body. A 
body of sin, the body that we struggle with all the time, the yes. aches and pains and the temptations mm-hmm. and the pulls and the desires right. to sin and get into sin. Paul said, the things I want to do, I don't do. And the things I don't want to do, I do. Mm-hmm. Why? We're always at struggle of this old fleshly body. But one day there is an eternal body awaiting yes. us, an eternal glory awaiting us. For us to be with the Lord forever and forever and forever. And that is the best type of healing in my mind. Amen. But lastly, there's power. There's power. The, the apostles, when they prayed, it says in, in Acts 2, 4, 31, it says, After they prayed, the place where they were shaken, meeting were shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Amen. They had the power That's of right. God. To proclaim the word of the Lord to the people. Yes. And they were able to go forth and proclaim the word. And the end result of that prayer was found in Acts chapter 5. The next chapter over, it says, As a result, people brought their sick into the streets and mm-hmm. laid them on the beds and mats mm-hmm. so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them well, as he passed by. Hmm. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem and bringing their sick and those tormented by evil spirits. And all of them were healed. Amen. All of them. That we have a great and mighty, wonderful God who wants to heal us and take care of us and yes. guide us and lead us. But there's power to be had. Yeah, Power. When you pray, you receive power. You may not feel like you're very powerful. You may feel like you're still a 90-pound winkling so, soaked wet. But you are powerful Amen. in the Lord. Amen. A dear elderly saint of God on their hands and knees praying is more powerful than a million Arnold Schwarzeneggers Amen. in his prime. That's right. In the Terminator time. God will give all of us the power that we need to proclaim his gospel at the times that we need to declare it. That's what the early church under endured. That's what they experienced. That's what they had. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but what of power, it says in yes. 1 Corinthians 4.20. Romans 1.16 says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because the what? The power, the dunamis power of God for salvation for everyone who believes. Everyone. Smith Wigglesworth says, God has never failed anyone who's relied upon his word. Amen. That's right. You stick to the word of God. You hold on to the word of God and don't let go. It's not like the old song, Hold On Loosely. I think the 38 special song, that song, Hold On Loosely and Don't Let Go. You know, you got to hold on tightly and don't let go to the Word of God. (laughs) But in your active prayer life, God will produce power. There's power to overcome the enemy's opposition. There's power to overcome adversity's persecution, the adversary's persecution. There's power to conquer hell's demons. There's power to overcome slavery to sin and temptation and addictions. There's power to receive healing from sickness, disease, and infirmities. There's power to conquer death in the grave. There's power that shakes the earth and the Spirit of God to move in your life. There's power, power, wonder-working power in those who believe in His holy name. So many people look for power in sex and money, rock and roll, sex, drugs, possessions, and fame, notoriety, politics. So many people want to look to the White House for all the answers when we have Jesus Christ who has all the answers, who is the answer today amen there's only one high that we can find and that's the high of the lord jesus christ amen. we're on the highway to the lord not highway to hell but highway to the lord jesus that's amen right. amen there's no high like the most high amen mark 16 verse 17 and 18 says this and these signs will accompany those who believe in my name they'll drive out demons they'll speak new tongues they'll pick up snakes with their hands they'll drink deadly poison and will not hurt them at all they will place their hands on the sick people and they will get well and then the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word with the signs that accompanied it. And that was filled in Acts chapter 5 as the early church when they saw even Peter's shadow healing somebody. Amen. God's power is at work for those who believe. The church is not some stale relic of the past, a monument that somebody could tear down. God's church is alive and it's active Amen. today. That's right. It doesn't matter how much we are persecuted or censured or how much the, the world, the PC culture or Marxist ideology wants to put us down and quiet the church. The Amen. church will never stop. Amen. The That's church right. in China will never stop. The church in Russia will never stop. Yes. The church in Indonesia will never stop. Right. The church in any country or even here in America will never stop. There will always be a remnant. There will Amen. always be an underground Amen. church. There will right. always be Bible-believing Christians who are looking to Jesus, Amen. who are always praying for God's power yes. to influence them. That's right. There's a perfect picture as I close of prayer. And as we're getting close to the 4th of July, 
my family and I just went to Mount Vernon the other day. And Mount Vernon, a wonderful place, George Washington's home, just across the river from us. And I was uh, amazed at the stateliness of that, of the, that entire property and of George Washington and how, the, how they're able to reconfigure his, from his death mask what he actually looked like and, and his actual looks. And, and it was amazing. But one picture of Abraham, uh, Abraham like of George Washington that I thoroughly love is that famous painting of him at Valley Forge. It was witnessed by Isaac Potts, who said that he saw re this Revolutionary War general and then to become president and such a prayer that I've never heard from the lips of any man. He saw George Washington in deep prayer at Valley Forge. And now we have that painting of him in the snow, of him praying, as a testimony of how God will use us if we pray. Amen. We were able to conquer British rule through prayer, Amen. through our faith in God. We were able to overcome King George because this nation and all the people pray Amen. for victory. That's right. And we see, we see the victory. It wasn't by George Washington's prowess in military tactics. Oftentimes it was by miracles. Amen. Hand and crook. But God preserved and made this nation. Today, we must be on our hands and knees in prayer. Amen. Well, now more than ever before, we need to be a praying people. Praying to God. There's three elements. We need to come to him in praise. Come to him with petitions. And then come to him expecting and receiving that power to work in your life today. Because it will. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will just touch our lives right here and right now. Forgive us where we have sinned. We've become complacent as a church. We've become apathetic. We've become lazy. As a church, we've got so used to our stained glass windows and our comfortable chairs or theater seats or pews. And we've gotten used to the piano or the organ or, or the praise band. We've gotten so used to the hymnals. We've gotten so used to air conditioning and the creature comforts of church that we've lost sight of the real true calling of the church. And that is to receive boldness to step out of these walls into the world to proclaim the gospel, even if it means persecution, even if it means death at the hands of men, evil men. Lord, may we find your guidance, your power, your anointing to proclaim your gospel message. Lord, lead us as your body. Lead us as your church to truly be the church in the New Testament, the ecclesia, the called out ones, the ones who are different, set apart, peculiar people, so that we can reach a world lost in its sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.